Welcome back to the Roadshow, everybody. Well, as temperatures begin to escalate, so do the risks of, yes, tick-borne illnesses. It's a very important topic. And the cases of Lyme, listen to this, in the U.S. have more than tripled over the past 15 years, with a shocking 75% of the cases coming from our own backyards. That's very alarming. We'll hear now to share more facts on ticks and how we can reduce our chances of contracting Lyme is Cara Giacomo from the Mosquito Squad. Good morning, Cara. Good morning, Brendan. How are you? I am great. So nice to have you here. You, you know, I, I was reading through some of the statistics here, 75% directly from our backyards. That's very alarming and scary, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, we get calls every day with that are emergency situations. Please come to my yard, right. treat for ticks, get them out of my yard. Absolutely. And safety is, you know, number one. That's the name of the game. And, you know, reading, I've been educating myself so much on this topic because it is so valuable, the, the information. Thank you. If there's a quiz later, I think I might do very well. But ticks actually go through four different life stages, correct? Yes. We have have the egg, we have the larvae, we have nymph, and the adult. And where do they really come from? I mean, what's the origin? Why do we have to worry about this, not necessarily infestation, but this fact that they're running rampant all over and ruining our lives? Well, when they lay eggs, there can be thousands of eggs in one, one clutch. So um, that's basically how they are brought into our area. Um, tick comes in, feeds off a deer, a mouse, or any other host, right. they need those, that blood meal to lay eggs. When they lay the eggs, um, once they hatch into the larvae stage, they're just waiting for another host to come by. Right. Picked up by usually a field mouse, and um, that's how they get transported around. Yeah, and that's, that's one of these things that when you hear about it, it seems really unfathomable, but it's a reality of this world in which we live in, the ecosystem at work, it's isn't it? It's unfortunate. It really is, but we're doing our best to protect not only ourselves, but we also need to be mindful of our pets as well. Yes, we are not a substitute for the vet. So we definitely need to go to our vet, talk to our vet about different options that you have available. Mm -hmm. um, tick checks on our vet, on our dogs, cats. Um, we don't want to bring any of those ticks into the house. Um, even if you do have your pet treated, they can come in on your dog and you be transferred to you. And what can the Mosquito Squad do for us specifically? Well, we have a couple Are you using, this looks, this device looks like, you know, I, I need it to take the kid, to keep the neighborhood kids off my lawn or to mix up cocktails. I'm not sure. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> um, this is actually a commercial blower. Right. We use all of these in all of our applications, whether it's tick and mosquito. Um, we have a reservoir up here that holds the liquid and it is mixed with water and it comes out on this end. And so people, you know, for people out there struggling with this, they feel there may be a problem uh, on their property, maybe the property of a loved one, a friend mm -hmm. or family member. You can kind of come in and assess. Is that how it kind of works yep. for you? We can do a couple different things. We can walk the property with the person. They can share their concerns with us. We take notes. We um, actually give tips on what they can do also to help their yard out. Right. And I, I'd imagine you've seen it all and heard it all. Oh, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. It's, it, there's new things that happen all the time. We also have these tick tubes here, the tick control tubes. We use a mice to deliver the eliminating effect to the nymphal ticks. Um, mice um, need bedding. Sure. So they take this, it acts like a flea collar would, the mice lays in it. Um, once that flea bites, flea or tick bites the um, mouse, they're eliminated. Unbelievable, really, uh, to see nature at work, so to speak, in this type of way. And also things we could do, simple things we could do around our home, using mulch as a barrier, just yes. cosmetic things that are also benefiting yep. us from a health perspective, it's, correct? It's beautiful. Mulch, stone between the grass and the wooded areas. Um, don't invite deer into your yard by providing a feast. Get sure. deer-resistant um, vegetation. Your know, local nursery can uh, take care of that and help you with that. A lot of people do have deer roaming in their neighborhoods. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, they're getting pushed out of their habitats and into ours. It may look like a postcard, but there are many different facets, many things going on beneath the surface that we need to be mindful of. Well, Kara, a great pleasure to have you here. Thank you. To sh shed some light on this very important topic. We appreciate it. I may need to borrow this for the weekend. No problem. Just I got a <laughs> stroll the neighborhood with it on right there. Well, if you guys would like to learn more all about protecting yourselves from tick-borne illness, what you can do, what the Mosquito Squad can do for you, just visit us at roadshow.com.